Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Once we are done with the previous four parts and in the last section we did uh, pre-processing of data so that we can train the model, train any sort of machine learning model right now. And uh, now comes the fun part of uh, trying different type of machine learning model and visualizing visualizing how they are performing on the test set and training set. So at first we will import all the necessary libraries such as Panda, C1, NumPy. In this block, we will import uh, whatever the necessary methods we need from the SKLN library, which is a very popularly used one. In this section, we can see there are two functions given give test engine and give train engine. Right now, we are going to skip this, and when we'll need, we'll see how does the how does this function give output or how does this work. Okay, so in the last section, in the last video, we created some training set and test set, and we have saved them saved them in a CSV format. And in this block of code, we are going to import all those uh, files in DF1 to DF4 data frame, and then concatenate concat concatenate them into one data frame. So now the DF has all the all the data frames we have imported. See that yes. all the data frame from one to four are uh, stacked one over another. It has in the fourteen columns and uh, this much amount of rows. Now that all the data frames are are imported in this single data frame, we go and see how does it look like. It is total fifteen columns and still ID column is present here, which you do not need. For uh, further processes, that's why we are going to drop the ID column in the next step. Yeah, now the ID column is dropped. The next step will be to dividing the data frame into feature matrix and target matrix. And uh, here X is our feature matrix, which contains all the column from zero to the la to the previous of the last one. That means up to sensor twenty one. And Y contains Y contains the last feature. That is a very useful line. Divide, dividing it into two sections of X and Y, then we can go ahead and do the training and testing. We are keeping 20% data for the testing of the new, of the machine learning model. In this project, we are going to train a random forest regression algorithm. So let's have a look what is random forest. Basically, a random forest is an ensemble technique where multiple decision trees are involved. This is an example. But this is a first decision tree, this is a second decision tree, and this is nth number of decision tree. And the data is some amount of data is fed into each decision tree to do the predictions. And uh, later, whatever the result outcome is uh, is given from each decision tree, they are average out to do the final prediction of the random forest. So it is something like that. as there are so many trees inside the uh, inside the uh, inside one algorithm, it is called random forest. Another thing to note here is, uh, as there are so many trees are voting for the result, here the chances of overfitting decreases with the random forest algorithm. So here the random forest algorithm is initialized and then it is fitted with the X train and Y train data that we have obtained just before. Once the training of the new of the regression model is done, then we can. Use this code to see how how does it perform on the training set and the test set. You can see here that the test set error is 53, whereas the training set error is 60. So it is surely overfitting the uh, given data right now. Performance on the train set. The first line of code here it gives back the x value and y value, where x represents the feature and y represents the target. But what is this 3 and 10? To know about this particular function that we have created, give train engine, we'll go back to the top here where, yeah, give train engine. This is the code, uh, this is the function I have used. So it has two inputs that is train number and train ID. If you have followed this series, then in the previous video, you, have, you must have seen that we have created some CSV files that is, uh, for test data processed test 001. Where this 1, 2, 3, 4 represents each condition that was given by NASA. And, uh, and for the training, the training set uh, name processed, uh, process train 001234. Just like the training and test set we have created in the last uh, in the last video. 
so here the train number train train number refers to the this id of whether it is 1 2 3 or 4 again engine the next input is engine id which refers to which number of engine we are referring to because each data set contains more than 100 number of engine degradation in there so these are the two inputs here it is also written here as well training number is the serial number of train set engine id is the id of the engine we imported the libraries necessary then we are going to read that uh, read that data, particular data frame into this df uh, variable where where the where this 0, 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 will be decided by the training number which which is an input to the function once that is done in this step we'll see df id equal to equal to 1 that means we'll check where the id matches the engine id if engine id is 1 then we'll see where uh, then we'll get only the columns which engine id is only is 1 with that we can we can access any engine id from any training set by using this function that was the importance uh, of making this function once that is imported we can drop the id column because it does we do not need it for predictions later we'll divide it into two parts x train y train and that will be our return value same is for the test set here everything is same just the process test is here here it was train here it is test i hope that is clear now that what does this function do exactly now that the objective of this function is clear we can see the performance of the training set here it uh, eases out our work of uh, taking out whatever engine or from whatever data set we need so as this particular uh, uh, random forest model is played with for all the training data set present here we are going to see how it performs on the training set itself for that we can just simply do one thing we can just change the engine id the, the training id here and uh, here let, let me see i want to see what is how what is the performance of the 54th engine if i just go and compile this i can see yeah, the root mean square error is 8 which is extremely good that means the trained model right now performs very good on the training set we can see other as well 65 yeah it is a little uh, worse than the last one still it is uh, accept acceptable then we have to do the same yeah it is also kind of good let's see how it performs on the next training set that is the second training set of the second training set and uh, 38 engine let's see it is also kind of good if i do the third engine and do i'm doing I'm, I'm doing this randomly so that you can get an idea that how easily i am able to access each engine id from uh, each engine engine id from whatever training set i want so this is how it looks like and it has a root mean square of 15.67 now that we saw its performance on the training set we can move move forward and see how it performs on the test set this is the code we have used where the first function here give test engine here the one refers to the data set id and five refers to the engine id in that particular data set we have total four number of test data set and uh, this particular engine uh, this particular code extracts that uh, that uh, exact amount of uh, amount of data and uh, put it in x test and y test so that we can easily predict use our uh, regression model regression random forest regression to predict predict uh, its output but there is one thing i should uh, tell you before is what is moving average we have created this function and what this function does it it, it obtains a moving average of the output in order to reduce the peak let's see what is moving average is like yeah this is a good example of moving average suppose we have this is our response 2 5 2 2 7 6 if we plot that the blue line refers to that 2 5 2 2 7 6 but if we want its moving average of a three point moving average let's say the window length is three that means at the first point we'll take first three features that is two five two and average length that we will get three in the next step we'll we'll first uh we'll start with the second feature two five two and uh, take its uh, average then two two seven will average two seven six will average and uh, this uh, yellow one if we plot here the curve will look something like this that it it, it gets rid of the peaks and valleys and smooths smoothens out the curve if I see here, yeah. the blue line here represents actual data 
but the six point average uh, as you can see it is a is the red line here and it is fairly smooth and outcome that is the operation of this particular function and we are smoothing out we are smoothening out the curve to see a better result and to see various uh, its performance on the variant various data set we are going to change this parameter uh, if i put six yeah, it's fairly good on the test set as well yeah but now we can see there are some engine data where it, the the test set error is extremely high that is 64 if i do for the two yeah for the two also it is extremely high if i do one three yeah for the third test set it is it's okay two and let's say do 30 yeah for uh, for some data set of the test set it is uh, performing good and for the sum it is not it is not that good so one conclusion we can draw here is uh, right now whatever model we have tra trained is is moderately good and we can improve on it further and the next improvement can be done by using something called as a grid search hyperparameter tuning right now we are using using a random forest algorithm so if i go here you can see these are usually the hyperparameters present in a random forest algorithm and we can tune them manually or automatically to improve the performance of the model but in this case we are going to use a grid search for that first what we have to do we have to make a dictionary of the parameters we want and then use grid search cv method to do the uh, to iterate through each each combination of this uh, parameter to see which one performs better it is also using a cross validation of tenfold so the so the result will be much better once we are we have done this we got a training set error of 50 and a train, uh, sorry we got a tested error of 50 and training set error of 60 which is not even which is not that good still so we can conclude one thing is that uh, the machine learning algorithm that we have used till now is not able to get all the variance or, or do adequate prediction for the data available to us so next we'll go ahead and dabble into the deep learning algorithm first we'll see how we can use convolution, convolutional neural network to predict the remaining useful life because they are supposed to do extremely good feature extraction from from the least amount of data available so that concludes everything about this video and thank you for your kind attention